Hello and welcome to another episode of With Enough Prep Time. I'm your host, The Nerd Man, and today we're going to be talking about DC and um, the kind of toxic fandoms um, in DC, uh, amongst DC fans. Um, it's fascinating to me. I really do think it's it's kind of fascinating to me how uh, DC fans are unable to even take a win. Um, that. So anyway, all right. Basically, I've I've been watching over the last two days, and um, you know the result, the the reaction to the Snyder Cut coming out. I've been overwhelmingly complimentary uh, about the Snyder Cut, and I think justifiably so. And there have been a lot of people who said they don't like it, uh, that, you know, they they can't see, for me, which is obvious to me, a, a, a real distinct dif difference and um, just a better level of quality overall in the filmmaking than, say, in something like... Um, Batman v Superman or Man of Steel. I just think it's a much, much stronger film uh, than than those two films. And I'm not saying people should agree with me on that. I'm just saying that that's, that's how I feel. Um, but, I mean, I just wanted to say that, you know, I think it's really, really important that as much as possible, um, when we're discussing the DCEU and where it is at the moment. Whether you're on the side of you want to restore the Snyderverse or somebody who doesn't want to restore the Snyderverse, I'm on the side of I would like Zack Snyder to have another movie, but just not the movie, um, the, 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 the dark, twisted uh, movie that he wants to make. I was suggesting um, that Zack Snyder perhaps um, adapt Tower of Babel as the next Justice League movie, do a couple of movies with this fun Justice League that he's created in the in the Snyder Cut, and then go into the dark apocalyptic world. Build it up for a while. Let other creators as well, um, you know, do solo movies, do team-up movies like Justice League Dark alongside, so you can build up to facing Darkseid. After a while, you know, flesh out Martian Manhunter, the Green Lantern, you know, uh, so that he has time to really, really think about how to make that story the best it possibly can be. Just like he had time to think to make this Justice League, um, uh, you know, this four hour Justice League, the best possible version of uh, the Justice League that could possibly be. I want to get to a point where we've had a couple of, um, you know, Zack Snyder Justice League movies that are real crowd pleasers, not divisive at all. And that, um, you know, people would be willing to literally sit in a cinema and watch a four hour um, Justice League, um, you know, apocalypse, uh, where, where the world is in a, a complete apocalypse. You know, give them time. That is the end game. That is the infinity war of this franchise. I just think it needs time to cook. Which takes me to, uh, I've got a really cool uh, subscriber. He goes by the name of Bruce Wayne. I have no problem with him. He's usually a really respectful guy. But it takes me to a problem that I tend to have with um, Zack Snyder fans in general. Um, that I just want to address because um, I think there can be no conversation going forward in which we as DC fans can unite behind one vision of the DC EU that we want so that we can go to Warner Brothers, all of us together, and, and confidently say what we want from what we want from them and say, look, we're not taking you you know, any more doing what just throwing shit at the wall when you've got a perfectly good um, platform with this Justice League movie to move into a really, really good and strong uh, um, contender 
for the MCU, a really strong DCEU vision. This um, Zack Snyder movie has a vision. And if other directors can come along and help out with that, I don't want Zack Snyder leading the charge, but help out with that. Uh, uh, and give these characters the solo movies they deserve and, you know, flesh out the world and do the, the, the side teams, the, 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 the um, uh, you know, the Nightwing movies, the, the, the um, uh, Batman Beyond movies, the um, Teen Titans, um, all of, you know, all of those things and the, 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 the Green Lantern Corps. If we can get those side movies going, um, as well as the mainstream Justice League, like a Martian Manhunter movie, um, Green Lantern, a good Wonder Woman 3, you know, where Patty Jenkins also, I think, needs a, a little bit of oversight after the mess that was Wonder Woman 84. If we can get all of that, if we can unify together with one voice around this movie, which I think has unified more people um, than, um, you know, than any other Zack Snyder movie before it. More people like this Zack Snyder. Well, I've seen a lot of people who, you know, previously, you know, like myself, was not necessarily the biggest fan of everything um, of Zack Snyder's vision, actually change around this movie and say, hey, you know what? I like this one. I really, really like this one. Now, I said... Uh, you know, uh, to, you know, in my former video that I, I'm, that the reason that Zack Snyder um, has been able, well, the reason this um, Justice League, I believe, is more of a crowd pleaser than um, his former work, even though it does have flaws, it's much, much more of a crowd pleaser, and I think it's 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 a, it's a, just a much better movie. I think it's the best DC movie. I'm not going to lie. I think it. I think on a technical level, this has definitely got the best action of any DC movie. Um, but it, it still has is uh, is dragged down, even though it's a masterwork by some of um, you know Zack Snyder's worst impulses. So. The reason I said that I think this movie is so good is because the studio gave Zack Snyder notes because Jeff Johns was there every day filming with Zack Snyder, ensuring that he puts a Superman in this movie that every, everyone can get behind, that makes sure to make sure that the Justice League were the Justice League. And I'm not saying that Jeff Johns didn't go too far didn't get this I, batshit idea to um, bring Whedon in and with Kevin Sujihara, uh, Sujihara decided instead of going with the, the vision of um, Justice League that they themselves helped um, give Zack Snyder input, that they themselves went and um, went behind, uh, you know, uh, Zack Snyder's back to try and, you know, um, get the movie down to two hours or whatever. And I know that... Jeff Johns certainly didn't want it to be two hours, but that, in fact, it was, um, you know, Kevin Sujihara that wanted it to be two hours. But I do think that it was Jeff Johns who, who was introduced. In fact, I know it's a fact it was Jeff Johns who was introduced the idea of putting Josh Whedon a little bit on this project to make it more like a Marvel project. Uh, we've seen that now um, from the Vanity Fair article. That's without a doubt. And it's also without a doubt that even prior to, um, uh, J uh, you know, uh, um, Josh Whedon being introduced into this project, that it was, uh, in fact, Zach's, uh, it was Jeff Johns and John Burke who were on set pretty much every day uh, to ensure that, um, you know, that uh, uh, Zack Snyder was making a more crowd-pleasing movie. That journalists even came to the set of Justice League, who uh, apparently didn't like um, uh, Batman v Superman, and they were there to be shown by the studio that you know that they changed course and that Zack Snyder was making a more crowd pleasing movie, right? And that's what you get with this. I, I'm not saying that the heart and humor is what I love about this movie, but I'm saying it makes the film um, more balanced and the characters are much more in line 
whether it's Superman or Flash or, you know, Cyborg, Wonder Woman are much more in line with their counterparts in the comics and in, um, you know, popular media. You know, this this Superman is much more in line with um, the, the Lois and Clark Superman and uh, the Superman from, uh, you know, uh, the comics and, and Christopher Reeve Superman. The Superman in this Justice League movie has the same core characteristics as the previous Supermans um, that we've seen in popular media, which means more people who know and love Superman will be on board with the Superman that is presented in this Justice League movie of Zack Snyder's. And that helps the movie tremendously. It makes it less divisive. So I've said this, right? And I, I wanted to show a, a response that I got from, um, you know, a really nice, uh, uh, he's a really nice um, uh, uh, subscriber of mine. I have no problem with him. But he said to me, um, you know, I'll have to disagree with you that Jeff Johns help, uh, was helping this film. Uh, Snyder actually cut out uh, all of Jeff Johns' dialogue and uh, scenes when HBO, HBO Max called him to finish it. That's why Jeff Johns was able to remove his name from the project. Snyder only got rid of the uh, Bruce and Lois subplot, but that's it. It's all on Snyder, and he did a good film. Credit where credit's due. Okay. So he's obviously a passionate Snyder fan or something along those lines. So I said, you know, obviously I'm not saying that Jeff Johns got the scenes that he rewrote into, into the, the, the film. That's not my argument. My argument is that the whole tone of the film changed massively and the characters and how they were being presented changed massively from when, um, from after BVS uh, was released and the response to that and that Jeff Johns was purposely brought in to oversee and ensure that things were more in line. And this is Jeff Johns, remember. Jeff Johns, who is also a massive Superman fan. He wrote Superman, um, a secret origin. He's a massive Chris Reed. He's a massive Richard Donner, Richard Donner fan. He, he worked with Richard Donner on his first job as an intern. So clearly, when you see the, uh, a, a market, marketed difference in the way Superman is presented in this Justice League movie, that it's clear then that the influence of Jeff Johns on this movie must have been something. And I'm not saying it was a major, I'm just saying the core of the character in this was more in line with how people see Superman. And therefore, I think that was probably an influence uh, by Jeff Johns. And that in general, the tone of this movie is more balanced between Zack Snyder's darker uh, um, you know, filmmaking style and some of the more lighthearted and um, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, emotional scenes in in this justice league movie and i think that was you know studio mandated that's all i'm saying and zack snyder himself admits it so i sent uh you know this person um you know uh, a video uh, to show uh, how zack snyder himself admitted basically uh that this was the case so um So we're going to look at Zack Snyder's interview now. Or sorry, uh, Zack Snyder at SnyderCon, basically admitting that this was the case, that the studio basically told him to make a different movie than the one that was planned because they had written um, Batman v Superman and Justice League Part 1 all at the same time. The studio told him to make a different movie or, or to, uh, and to change things about it. So here's Zack Snyder himself. Oops, I always do this. Here's Zack Snyder himself talking about this. No, 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 no. 
What I was going to say is that, like, look, when this movie came out, understand that we had written, we, Chris Terry and I had finished. When he says this movie came out, he's talking about Batman v Superman. The script for Justice League before this movie came out. Chris Terry and I had finished the script for Justice League before this movie came out, right? So that script was done. Movie came out and some people didn't like the movie. A vocal minority. <laughs> and, so, and so I was asked by the studio to like say, hey, you can't, there's a lot of stuff we don't want you to do from that script. So we did a rewrite, right? Of the script. So the original Justice League that Chris and I wrote, we didn't even shoot. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of... Right? The original Justice League that they wrote, they didn't even shoot. Now, he says there's a lot of it, which I've, I'm, I imagine is just the basic plot of, um, you know, uh, Steppenwolf coming and invading um, uh, the, uh, you know, in, in Steppenwolf coming basically to, you know, uh, to invade Earth or whatever. But a lot of the ideas, he said, what he was told, you know, we're, we're taking that out. I think Superman coming back is massively evil, for instance, and a lot of other things. Now, um, Bruce Wayne, uh, the, the guy who wrote me, is actually right on one thing, that some of the ideas, like the black Superman suit, which they told him to take out, he has put back in and restored to what he originally planned. But there's a lot of it that he, he, he wasn't even able to shoot a lot of his original idea because the studio had already told him before he made a, he shot a single thing you have to completely change that and that's what i mean by having zack snyder with some notes with you know uh, some guidelines some restrictions sometimes can be a good thing for it can be a good thing for any director any writer anybody to have a few restrictions on themselves. I see, I think the same thing of Patty Jenkins now. I think you can't let certain people just have free reign of ideas. It will hurt them themselves as well as the studio and as well as the DC as a brand. Now, the reason I'm saying all this, and I, look, I don't wanna, I'm not trying to like score points by saying Zack Snyder. It's not like I'm like, oh, you see, the reason I'm right about Zack Snyder is because he got notes from the studio and he got notes from Jeff Johns, and that's what makes me right. I don't care what reason Zack Snyder made a better movie. Whatever the reason Zack Snyder made a better movie, I want him to stay in that lane. Whether it was him personally who decided one day, hey, what if I just actually just make a, a more, um, you know, comic accurate Superman and put him in my Justice League movie? Or if I make more comic accurate versions of Wonder Woman and all of these, whoever, whatever spark in his head led him to uh, do that. I don't care if it was Jeff Johns or the Tooth Fairy. I need him to stay in that lane. That's the lane he needs to stay in for a while. We like this. He's created a crowd-pleasing movie. Almost universally, the only scenes that are being majorly, majorly criticized that everyone keeps bringing up is that last scene which he shot um, with the seven, in the 70 million reshoots with the Joker, which is where he wants the next movie to go. He needs to be able to stay with this. This Justice League has just formed. We've just got them. And the reason I, you know, so I, I, I obviously sent this to uh, this guy, and I think he thinks, oh, I'm just trying to score points. I'm trying to prove, you know, I don't want to just admit I was wrong about Zack Snyder, and he did always understand Superman and all of this kind of thing. And I'm like, I don't care. I'm not trying to score points. I'm just looking at the facts of what happened. And I'm dealing with the facts of what happened, right? Um... And it's not like I'm trying. I'm not against Zack Snyder. I'm not for or against. I'm just for. I'm for good DC movies. I'm for DC being successful and DC being able to um, compete with the MCU. 
I'm happy for Zack Snyder to be part of that. So, you know, he writes me back after I send him evidence. And this is what I'm saying. I think that certain people get frustrated with Snyder fans. Now, I've stopped calling Snyder fans the Snyder cult or anything. I used to do that. And I'm trying to really, really stop doing that because I think that that's part of the toxicity of um, this fan base. And I think this movie should be a movie that can unify both sides around an idea, a principle of how these movies should go from now on. We have some really, really good, fun DC movies. We have Wonder Woman, we have Shazam, we have Joker, we have um, Zack Snyder's Justice League, which I believe is the best DC movie to date, even beyond um, The Dark Knight, in my opinion. You know, I haven't heard many other people argue that, but that's my fucking opinion. Um, but I think a lot of people think the movie is very good, a very fine movie and a very good start off. They like all of the characters from Aquaman to Flash to Cyborg. You know, he's done a really, really good job on the directing and action department and visuals. Uh, most people like the score. Um, so it's great. We should be unified around this. But instead, we're having little arguments and squabbles over, look, uh, so this is what, what is responded to me after I showed evidence, you know, um, and I'll play you the rest of the video. So they told him no about the Lois and Bruce love story, but that's it. I very much doubt that, um, you know, this is what he's saying. They told him no about the Lois and uh, Bruce love story, and that's it. Everything else is all him. And when HBO Max called him, he actually made it more like this vision. Zach actually also shot two scenes of every scene he filmed, even serious takes. He cut out Jeff John's lines like the I heard you talk to fish. Right. I'm not saying that I, I'm not disagreeing with that, by the way. I'm not saying he didn't shoot two scenes. He didn't shoot scenes that were more like his scenes and scenes that were more like uh, the what the studio had mandated. But what I am saying is that the studio mandate was that so was to the degree before they started shooting that everything in terms of the tonality of this film and in terms of how the characters were being presented had fundamentally changed that's what i'm talking about it's not just uh you know that um uh, that uh that you know that Jeff Johns actually came in and and and, and script doctored certain scenes. I know that Chris Terrio wrote all of this. I know that Zack Snyder and Chris Terrio came up with the story, but they were given uh, you know uh, restrictions on what they could do with the characters. That's what I'm talking about. That's all I'm saying. This is ninety percent Zack Snyder. I, I don't deny it, but there's ten percent in which the studio said hey, you can't do this. And yeah, one of the, you know, you go on like it's a, they go on like it's a small thing. Lois not being pregnant by Bruce Wayne is a pretty massive deal. That would have bittered a lot of people to this film who actually like this film. And if that's the direction he's going next, again, I would think very, very carefully about that. Unless this is a massively amazing film. I would think very, very careful about making such a creative decision. So let's finish the rest of what Zack Snyder had to say so it doesn't look like I've just cut it off to be willfully misleading. Part of it that we shot, but the idea, the hard, hard idea, the scary idea, we never filmed. Right. Because the studio was like, that's crazy. And we were so insecure at the time after this movie came out. We were just like, I guess it is crazy. Like, we're fucking nuts. Like, what are we? There's going to be there's gonna be mass hysteria in the streets if we film this. <laughs> Apparently. Crazy. All right. It's a long story. <laughs> but suffice to say... <laughs> Suffice it to say that, like, so look, the truth is, is that, you know, the nightmare sequence in this movie, right, was always my idea that all of that would be eventually explained, of course. I mean, is that a surprise? Um, you know, that we would 
and that we would end up in the distant future where dark side has taken over earth and we're the anti-life and where he ha and and now with his ragtag band and it was there was a few members of the justice league that had survived to that world and that they were fighting try and 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 you know so batman's so basically a lot more of this dark world was going to be referenced it it seems to me from this interview was going to be much more peppered through this particular justice league movie the one that we got the very first one and that's what the studio was saying you know what let's let's hold off on that one let's just do a a, a good team up um uh, you know um uh, you, basically origin of the justice league before we leap into crazy ideas and that's what i think you know helped this movie significantly and i can you know I guess it's just this is my opinion, uh, and it's, th this isn't a fact. But I, I have to, I have to think that the studio actually told him after Batman v Superman about the very, very dark takes on Batman and the very, very dark takes on Superman that we and you know the uh, and the rest of the characters that they wanted um, a, a, to up a little bit of the humor and heart of the movie, and that's what he did. He's actually said that in um, the uh, in, in in an interview um, with Vanity Fair that all of the heart and humor that the studio wanted him to put in the movie he was going to have to cut out because they wanted they mandated that uh, later that they wanted it to be two hours long. He said that in the Vanity Fair, so we know that this movie was, you know, the, the studio had their claws in this movie. It's just that, again, the, the studio was stupid because even though they'd already said, all right, I'm going to auto-correct this, they thought that, you know, putting Josh Whedon's name on the Justice League would be more marketable than, um, you know, uh, just putting Zack Snyder's name, that people would associate it with Avengers and, and therefore, uh, uh, you know, the film would uh, do better box office-wise. And if it was two hours long, you know, uh, a similar thing. So that's my thing. I mean, the problem, as I was trying to state, is that there's, there's a general kind of thing, problem with Snyder fans to actually deal with what you're saying and actually provide counter evidence to what you're saying when you state something against Snyder. And even if you're saying the movie's genius, the movie's magnificent, the movie's, you know, all of these things, they still want to come at you as if you're attacking Zack Snyder. And it's just so uh, uh, baffling to me. Like, what do I have to do, you know, in terms of I love this movie. I think it's the best DC movie ever made. I don't know how much further I can go in um, clarifying that I think Zack Snyder did a brilliant job. But to suggest that he did it all alone, you know, they don't even mention Chris Terrio, like the writer, when they're, when they're talking about this kind of thing. It's as if Zack Snyder wrote the script himself. So that, that's, that's the, the thing about the, 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 the uh, Snyder cult. Now I want to talk about the other side of um, the DC fandom, which I believe is equally toxic at the moment. It's people that are attacking this movie um, for no good reason. Um, I don't know. What, it, it's a lot of people who just, you know, I, I think uh, don't want to admit um, facts, uh, you know, that are extraordinarily, extraordinarily biased um, towards uh, certain aspects of the movie. Um, and you know things they say that they uh liked uh, you know when they say that they think endgame is this great movie it's a fantastic movie when it actually endgame is a piece of shit movie when you think about it there's a lot of really bad stuff in endgame um and it's kind of embarrassing on a story level level um you know in terms of it's it, it the, the the writing in this in that movie 
uh, on a story level. The only good aspect in terms of the writing is, well, the dialogue's actually fairly, fairly okay, but the, the best thing about both movies really is Thanos and maybe Iron Man and Captain America. They're really good. Everything else in between and the time travel stuff is ludicrous, absolutely fucking ludicrous, right? And uh, so there's those kind of fans who are like, uh, again, attacking this movie. There's anti-Snyder fans who just were never going to like this movie from the beginning. You know, never have an open mind to this movie at all. Um, and, um, you know, the reason I, I, I wanted to show you um, just, uh, you know, one of the criticisms, obviously, is, you know, of this movie is, oh, Zack Snyder used a, a bunch of pop music. You know, why was he using pop music in, 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 in the movie? And I'm like, sorry, so all the people who like Endgame, let me get this straight. You don't like people using pop music, yeah, in superhero movies. Is that right? Because I'm getting confused. Is this is this a is this a critical score for for from Silvestri? Am I am I missing something here? Because that's you know it's 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 criticisms like that against the movie, just completely unfair uh, criticisms, um, and it's just because they don't want to admit basically that they were wrong and that 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 you, you always admit you were wrong i'll admit i was a little bit wrong about Zack snyder you can always admit there's nothing there's nothing bad the movie was good is it flawed sure but it is a completely different movie you know there's the, the beginning and the ends are the same there's some action scenes that are the same but the way uh Zack snyder interprets the action scenes that he shot versus the way um, uh, uh, Josh Whedon did, he did it in a very, very pedestrian way. And I really need to get through to this other side. This is the opportunity to tell Zack Snyder, right, all the Zack Snyder haters out there, this is the ability, the opportunity to tell Zack Snyder, look, you did good, kid. This is how we wanted you to do it from the from the jump. This is how we wanted Superman. When Superman in this movie is about to get, take off flight and you hear what Jonathan Kent should have been telling him from the jump, what Jonathan Kent should have been telling him in Man of Steel, you know, fly, son, do the right thing, be good, be do the good, do, be a good person. That that All of that stuff was so great in this movie. All of the parents were great in this movie, from Hippolyta to uh, the, the Silas and um, the and, and Mrs. Stone, from who are Cyborg's parents. All of that stuff was great. And you're telling me about, oh, Zack Snyder does all these pop music things in this movie. But it's like, is this? Am I, am I listening to... Is this a... This is a classical movie score. Zack Snyder slows down the scenes. Is this necessary, all of this stuff? Hulk on a on a, on a drive on a drive with Rocket. This movie's three hours long. I have to do that. And there's other rock songs and other kind of stuff in that movie as well. So please don't tell me Zack Snyder is the only one who does this crap. They all do it. And then, uh, you know, and I didn't like the, the, the pop songs necessarily. Uh, there was one scene that I liked the pop song in, which was um, when Flash saved um, uh, uh, Iris Wolf. But apart from that, I didn't like the pop songs. But don't tell me that ruined the whole fucking movie for you. The movie was well-written, well-directed, Great action, better than any MCU movie action. And that's, an, that's a fact. That's not an opinion, that's a fact. The way he shot superpowers is pretty damn fucking revolutionary. So there's that. And if you're into film, you should know that the way Zack Snyder shot superpowers in this movie has never been seen before. So let's just get off this and let 
we there's a chance, one opportunity to come together to try and help, you know, have a voice in how this universe can go before people like because let's face it, anyone who's got faith in Walter Hamada is crazy after seeing the plans and what he's been stating about putting, um, you know, uh, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, the guy who wrote Superman Flyby, uh, um, uh, Ab Ab J.J. Abrams. He wants to put J.J. Abrams in control of... Um, of the DC, uh, in, in, in control of um, a lot of the DCEU. This is a man who wrote a, a notoriously bad um, Superman script that he's now um, put in charge of making the new Superman, uh, that they've now put in charge of making the new Superman movie. That's what they're doing. Please don't tell me that you have your faith in Walter Hamada to fix the DCEU when all you're hearing about is um, projects that are nonsensical uh, in terms of developing the DCEU. Now, I wanted to finish this video just with this um, because I think that it's, um, it's something nice that happened, right? Uh, that I think this is how DCEU fans, I hope, can um can really learn to discuss things with each other openly and friendly and so we can come and unify around what is good in the dceu you know we, yeah we don't have to agree on absolutely everything but let facts guide us rather than emotions and um uh, hero worshipping um, particular directors saying, uh, you know, directors are responsible, you know, Zack Snyder's responsible for everything good in the DCEU. You know, at first people, at first Zack Snyder fans didn't like Wonder Woman. Now they say Zack Snyder was the, the architect and, and creator and basically Patty Jenkins didn't even really make Wonder Woman. It was pretty much Zack Snyder. It was his team, his action, you know, Everything that about that movie, according to them, was uh, you know Zack Snyder's uh, doing. Um, this hero worshiping of Zack Snyder. Zack Snyder is a good director. We want him. Let's let's all come together and say it would be stupid to send Zack Snyder off. Or if he goes to the MCU, then we've got a, a, a huge money maker. And a, and, and a conceptual, uh, you know, brilliant conceptual mind. And the MCU has just snatched him up. And he's now making great MCU movies. Let's, we should embrace the fact that Zack Snyder is such a great director and try and say, okay, we like you, but let's, let's just make sure that you temper your ideas. We can come together collectively and, and, and ensure that that, that happens. Um, and we can collectively, you know, the, the, there's, there's, there's other things that we can collectively do once we start going, stop going off emotions, stop, you know, like, oh, I have to be right. You know, like if I said something before, I can't change my mind. You can change your mind about Zack Snyder. You know, he made a good movie. Just change your mind. It's like, it's fine. It's, it, it doesn't say anything bad about you that you were wrong about this movie and uh, it's actually a pretty decent movie. At the very least, it's a, a decent movie, if not a very, very good movie. Yeah, it's over long. I know it's over long, but we all knew it was going to be four hours. So um, in terms of that, that's what I'm saying. There's a lot of toxicity. And I want to give a shout out to Enosh from Point Dexter's Lounge. We've often disagreed on a lot of things. But the fact we can come together and have a conversation together, um, you know, and if you listen to the conversation, it's cordial, it's friendly, and we are on both sides, different sides. Even on the Ray Fisher issue, we're on different sides of the debate, but we can come together and talk 
And that is going to help us to have the most amount of power in, in terms of shaping the DCEU, rather than the DCEU being split in half by um, uh, worshipping a director or, um, you know, uh, just hating on this director way more than he actually deserves. So, I was just going to say that the reason I was asking you about Man of Steel and BBS Right, it's because I just saw a significant improvement in the writing department. I think David Goya, as a writer, is very, very hit and miss. I think, um, what is his name, Chris Terrio, is a much, much better writer. And I think Zack Snyder really has proven since through Watchmen and this film in particular, that he's really a filmmaking genius. But he's a genius, sometimes geniuses have too many ideas, right? Mm. They have too much going on in their head, too much that they're trying to communicate. And I think when he's paired with a great writer who can really put down a strict storyline like, like in, in the Justice League, because I don't think there's anything, the only critiques I have of uh, Justice, this Justice League film are fanboy critiques. They're critiques of, oh, I wouldn't have done it like that. I have nothing on a story level, story level, um, uh, on a story level, as a critique of this film, it moves. It, 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 it's, 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 you know, it's, it's kind of energetic. It's, it's, it's got heart. It's got, you know, it's got soul, and 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 it feels really, really easy to watch. Um, and so, it, 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 the things that I, as I said, I don't like about it. I don't want to go into spoilers. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but, uh, I know it's hard. Can we, yeah, can, we, can, we, can we talk about the um, the the what's it called the I wanted to show you this bit of this conversation because it's important to show that how Enosh, even though he's a massive Snyder fan, how we can actually contemplate the other side of things and actually see things from another point of view and actually sit there and listen and actually, you know, take in what's being said, right? And even though he disagrees, he can contemplate the other side of things. And that's what we need to start doing, being able to contemplate the other side, another opinion, another, you know, and being able to take that in and maybe even it changing you a little bit. This conversation with Enosh changed me a little bit in terms of um, appreciations of certain aspects of Zack Snyder. We need to learn to do that. So I just want to the video off this thing because I, I, I mean, the future plans for uh, Zack Snyder's. Just yeah, yeah, we can, we could talk about like the stuff that's in the storyboards and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Like, and he, he talked about yeah, that that was going to be the future. Yeah, right. So basically, if I look at the Justice League, film, I think that there's a lot of uh, I, I know this, I don't know who's responsible. It's either Zack Snyder listening to fans critiques or maybe the studio maybe making Zack Snyder compromise in a few places. But I think all of the body of the movie up until the nightmare sequence is excellent. The stuff that Flash does, the way Flash moves in this movie, it's just it's just a genius way of capturing that movie. Wonder Woman is on point. Shout out to every single one of the parents in this movie. To you, Dr. Silas, to all of the, I even like Amber Heard in this movie. <laughs> like, it was really like, crazy. That's funny. But, That's funny. but where I think that Zack Snyder and Rain was on the reshoots, right? It was Zack Snyder again. As you said before we came on the video, like, you're willing to see it, you know, but you feel deeply a little bit uncomfortable with that scene that looks like it's going. Especially if it's well, the second you know, movie. Yeah, not 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 the scene, but like like when when I hear that a whole, that the Tiger movie would be nothing but that, I'm 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 just it gives me some pause exactly. to kind of to kind of say, okay, it's not that I'm against it, and it's not that I'm mm. like that I would look at it and go, okay, I don't like this. It's just what is, it, yeah. what is it exactly? And then, but it, but it would it, like we've seen this full arc where it literally goes from the the innocence of man, the 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 
turn, kind of turning the corner in BVS. I have a problem because I know, BBS, I know, and then no. and then Justin kind of bringing it to fruition with all these characters coming up, facing something like Stefan and and Dark Side behind the scenes, and then bringing that down to the end of what what Justice League is, and then it told the bottom completely falls out. Then you see with the mm -hmm. nightmare, and then. Only, my only thing is, is you gotta, you gotta restore it at the end. You gotta, you know, so that you have this full arc that oh, yeah. you know, it, it comes I, I up, it comes up, it turns the corner. You know, they they <laughs> win, they win, but the bottom falls out then, and obviously something's still wrong there. And now, how do you come up out of that? You know, and so yeah. I mean, it's always possible, but um, you know, I, but look, put it this way. I, and I'll, I'll do it like, so that I don't go back into Man of Steel, but put it this way. I feel like this is the first time we've seen the Justice League. This is the really, like, this is the first we've seen Superman. And they're fun. Wonder Woman's fun. Super, uh, sorry, Wonder Woman was from her own movie. But, like, Flash is fun. Wonder Woman's fun. Superman. My book is excellent. Shout out to Ray Fisher. It did a, a tremendous job um, in this movie. Um, so... I want to see more of that before we go into a dark, twisted, you know, world where Batman and Superman are once again at conflict. We kind of did that already, like that with BBS. You know, we've kind of deconstructed Superman and had to say, oh, I believe people can be good in this world, or, uh, I, you know, I'm bad in this world, or something like that. Yeah, BBS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've had yeah, that, and I, I, that broke my heart watching that as a Superman. And I'm like, Superman, don't say that. I love the movie, but like those little bits were just like daggers to me. I'm just like, nah, Superman would never say anything like that. But fair enough, he's done it. It's it's in the past, but now we've got this. I just think that um, yeah, Dark Side is better than Thanos. <laughs> Look, I, I just just re just real quick, <laughs> one one eight seven. You man, I know that you're Marvel. I feel I feel like I feel like man, but. That we, that we ever get a Justice League 2, it would start off, obviously, where we end. It is not... So, anyway, anyway, this is the conversation we had, and it was a perfectly cordial conversation between two sides of a different fandom. And I just wanted to say, that's what we should be doing. We should reach out to each other more. I, it, it, we don't have to be enemies because we don't like exactly the same thing. And we should be able to take a little bit of humble pie. I was a person who wasn't a big fan of certain things Zack Snyder did with Superman, and I wasn't a big fan of Man of Steel. And I was a very, very uh, cautiously optimistic about um, the Justice League um, Snyder Cup, but I definitely, I definitely, I'll admit this right now, I was not a supporter of uh, release the Snyder Cut. Definitely not. Uh, you can go back on the history of my channel. I did not support release the Snyder Cut. And I was wrong. I was absolutely fundamentally wrong. I wanted the Snyder Cut to eventually be released, but I wanted it to be released, um, you know, after, say, the Batman came out, after people had really got, you know, into um, this new DC universe. I was hoping um, Warner Brothers was making strides to do things like reboot Superman. And I didn't want people constantly clamoring for stuff that I thought did not work in the DCEU. Like for instance, Henry Cavill Superman. But now I see that Henry Cavill Superman does work. And he'd be a great Superman and it would be foolish to lose him. I can admit I was wrong. That's the important thing here. The important message. Otherwise, you are a little bit toxic. If you can't admit you're wrong, even in the face of factual evidence that you're wrong, then you've got you've got serious problems. I'm sorry. And you're gonna just lead to really the end of the DCEU. Because if we're all fighting amongst each other, collectively that has an influence on box office, that has an influence on, you know, a lot of different things um, in terms of how the studio can 
uh, work out what exactly the fans want. If we can't get together somehow, uh, we're never going to get anything like the MCU and see our dreams come true in terms of our favorite storylines in comics um, come to the big screen. We need to get together and, you know, support the DCEU, support, be, be in a place where you can support any DC movie because you're happy with where these characters are at. Look, a director is never going to do exactly what you want to do with the with the justice league you cannot have that as a measure for what you know i like wonder woman the movie but there's tons of things as a wonder woman fan that i hate that patty jenkins did with that movie and i actually have been proven kind of right in terms of where it went with wonder woman 1984 that narratively those things were wrong like killing the gods and um, you know, uh, 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 the Zeus origin rather than the clay origin and all of that kind of stuff. But nonetheless, um, it is, it, I can't expect that my exact vision of these characters is what the director is going to present. So what I will say is, Yes, you have to be respectful of the characters. You can't get them doing things that are completely out of line with their character. But if they if they go within the lines, if they color within the lines, give them a break. And and in this in this Zack Snyder movie, yes, the Justice League did certain things I don't like, but Zack Snyder colored within the lines. It was a version of the Justice League that I recognize. Would I have them kill? No, I don't like them killing. I think that's that's wrong. Um, maybe that's a message I would like to send to Zack Snyder without having to, um, you know, completely uh, take away this moment where he's made a really, really great auteur movie um, that we as comic book fans should all be absolutely proud of. But that's me. Um, and thank you for listening. Um, and I'll see, uh, please like, comment, subscribe. Um, I'll see you on the flip side and, um, yeah. Um,